Hi, this is Mr. Judd, and welcome to biology. Biology is the study of life. Bio means life, and ology is the study of. So, this should be easy. I'm alive. You're alive. Lots of things are alive. But how can we decide? Is it a living thing, or is it not a living thing? By the way, in biology, we call living things organisms. So here's your challenge. Take a look at this quick video clip and decide. Is this an organism or is this not an organism? The answer is actually quite challenging. It's actually difficult to decide whether something is living or not living. In this presentation, we're going to go through some of the main characteristics that all living things share. And as we do, we're also going to preview almost all the topics that we'll cover throughout this course. Let's begin. The first characteristic of life I want to talk about are cells. All organisms are made of cells. This is a flower petal as seen through a microscope. When you do that, you can see that there are all these bricks and those bricks are individual cells. Cells come in all shapes and sizes. And these over here are human cells. As you can see, they're not quite as square. They have a cell membrane instead of a cell wall. And they have a nucleus inside of each one. Cells come together in groups. And when they do, they are called a tissue. So cells that work together in a group are called a tissue. All living things are made of cells. The next characteristic that all organisms share is that they all maintain homeostasis. And this might be a scary word, but it's really not that bad. Homeo means same. And stasis means stable. So organisms maintain stable sameness. What does that mean? Well, let's give an example. Let's talk about your body temperature. Okay, so your body temperature, depending on who you are, is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that is not exact number for everyone, but it's pretty close. But what happens if your body temperature starts to rise? Well, your body's gonna respond. It may start to sweat. Sweating actually cools you down by evaporation. And when you cool down, you are gonna come back into your normal body temperature, back into homeostasis. But what happens if your temperature gets too low? Well, your body might do something like start to shiver. That uses more energy, and it's going to raise your body temperature back up and push you back into your normal state, or what's called homeostasis. This whole idea is called a feedback mechanism. A feedback mechanism is anything that pushes your body, body back into balance. Uh, other ideas um, that go along with feedback mechanism or uh, body conditions are things like blood sugar, blood pH, carbon dioxide levels, oxygen levels, and lots of other examples. So that's a feedback mechanism, pushing your body back into homeostasis or sameness. All right, now let's talk about food. All organisms have to get food, and how they get food is called nutrition. There are two main types of nutrition. There's the first type, which is autotrophic nutrition. Auto means self. And uh, anytime you see this word troph, that means fed. So autotrophs feed themselves, like this plant is doing photosynthesis, so it's making food for itself. It's feeding itself. It doesn't have to eat to get its food. The opposite of that are heterotrophs, or heterotrophic nutrition. This bunny rabbit is eating a dandelion, and it is getting its food from something else. It's getting it from a plant. So this word actually means uh, other, and trophs still means fed. So they are fed by others. Those are the two main types of nutrition. If you feed yourself, you're autotrophic. And if you get food from others, you are heterotrophic. All right, now that we have food, what are you gonna do with it? This represents a food molecule. It has one, two, three, four individual components and they're all linked together. So this is gonna be our food molecule, okay? Our food molecule, to be able to be used, it's gonna to have to be broken down. So we're gonna break our food molecule into its little components. That process right there is called digestion. Digestion is a process that occurs within most organisms. It happens within our digestive system. If you're a single-celled organism, it has to happen right within your cell. 
then what are we going to do? We have these components of our food and we can rebuild them back into us. So we can take those components and put them in a different order to make us. Building really is a word called synthesis. Synthesis means building. So you might hear the word protein synthesis. That means building a protein. You might hear photosynthesis. That means building food using light. So digestion is breaking down and synthesis is building back again. Okay, now on to transport. This picture over here is of a circulatory system. You can see the heart right here within a human and it's pumping blood around the body. And what it's doing is it's transporting uh, all sorts of things around the body, including those food molecules we talked about before, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and lots of other things like hormones. So transport is moving things around an organism. But what if you're an organism that has only one single cell? Well, you still have to do transport. Transport can occur right through the cell membrane. So things can come out and things can come in. There are two types of processes that move molecules into and out of cells. The first one is called diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of molecules into or out of a cell using no extra cell energy. The molecules just move on their own. In some cases, that's not enough. We need to push molecules into or out of a cell using cell energy. And when we do that, we call that active transport. Active transport. So diffusion and active transport can either be in or out. Okay, diffusion and active transport don't have anything to do with in or out. They just have to do with whether they use cell energy. Active transport uses energy and diffusion just relies on the energy that molecules already have, does not require any extra cell energy. That's transport. All right, now we're ready to take on cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is all about energy. Okay, so this runner is going to be powered by some energy. We're going to start with some food. The first step is we have to break those food molecules down into their component parts. Remember, that's digestion. Then these food molecules can be used in energy, but they can't be used directly. We need to rely on a process called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration happens within cells. So here's my cell. Here's a nucleus of a cell. And the part that does cellular respiration is called the mitochondrion. You may know that as the powerhouse of the cell. So these food molecules are gonna diffuse into the cell and they're gonna go off to the mitochondria. The mitochondrion is going to then process those food molecules and produce a product called ATP. And ATP is a form of cellular energy. It can power muscles, it can power active transport, it can power all sorts of things. That ATP, in this case, is gonna be used to move the, the muscles in this runner. So cellular respiration is actually a chemical process that occurs within the mitochondria to convert food molecules into usable energy. Where this gets confusing is that you'll often confuse it with this, the respiratory system. This does not have anything to do with the respiratory system. It's a different process. Cellular respiration is really what you do with food molecules and oxygen to get energy out. Now that we've made some energy, we also made some waste products. Getting rid of waste is called excretion. So why do I have a picture of a dog? Well, this dog is actually excreting. As it exhales, it is removing carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of cellular respiration. It's also, as you can see, removing some water vapor, which is another waste product. Excretion is all about removing waste. You may have, uh, typically think of excretion as, uh, as producing urine, but that's not the only way to remove waste. You also remove waste by exhaling or by sweating. So excretion is lots of different ways that we remove waste. All right, on to our last characteristic of all organisms, and that is evolution. Evolution is a change in a species over time. Or maybe you can think of it like this. It's a change in a species from one generation to the next. Evolution requires reproduction. Reproduction comes in two main varieties. There is, first, asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is the simple type. It's when an organism copies itself and makes an identical clone. If asexual reproduction is used, the potential for evolution is much lower because there's less chance for variation since all the babies came out, come out the same. 
The second type is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is when genetic materials combine from usually a male and a female to make an offspring that's completely unique. It's a combination of mom and dad's characteristics. That gives you a lot more potential for change from generation to generation. It gives you a lot more possibility for evolution to occur. So evolution is the key characteristic of all living things, but it requires reproduction. There are two types, asexual and sexual. But just know that reproduction itself is not a characteristic of life because you can be alive and not reproduce.